I don't know if I mentioned this before, uh, and these are available from Harbor Freight, uh, 10 or $11 with a coupon. Uh, they're really handy because the w transmitter is a motion sensor. Um, you can put it out in your haunt or out in your yard, and if somebody is wandering up there in the evening messing with your stuff, uh, you, the chime will go off in the house and let you know. Um, you can also use them to trigger uh, larger uh, controllers like the Scuba Boo. It takes the place of a wired PIR. Just take the uh, little receiver board and insert it in there. This runs on three uh, double, uh, sorry, the three C size batteries, but you know that's. It just means it runs on four and a half volts. You can do it with a wall wart. I'm feeding it six volts right now. Um, I just don't keep three uh, C-size batteries on hand. Uh, you can also get a Y cable, so the power uh, controller for your uh, power supply for your prop can also uh, power the um, receiver. In this case, this is the, on this particular device. This is a light sensor. I'm going to tape the LED over this. When this goes off, these LEDs uh, flash and the little speaker makes a sound. The third LED is over here where it will flash. So I'll turn this on now. And I will trigger the motion sensor. I chose this prop simply because it has the uh, audio uh, sound sensor and light sensor that are used in most of the Jemmy and Techie props. So it's also small and fits within the uh, video area easily. Could have been done with a number of other props. Turn this off. Remove this, remove the LED, just tape over the bottom of this so my motion here won't cause it to go off. And I'm going to put the speaker over the sound port on it. Turn it back on. And trigger the Now the idea is if you have a larger prop, a uh, standing uh, character, you can tape this over the uh, uh, light port on it or the sound port with the other one uh, for roughly uh, a little of your time and less than $12 you can add a wireless motion sensor to any of your props to trigger them. Uh, the same kind of functionality you'd get with an expensive controller. You can get these in a different channel. This one is channel 2. Um, look at the, for the little sticker on the box when you buy them. They can also be changed if you have to later. Um, there's a jumper in there. I think uh, I did a little tutorial on Halloween Forum on it. But you can get one controller, uh, you can get the controllers on the same channel so that one transmitter will trigger multiple props or you can get them on different channels so one uh, trigger doesn't set off multiple props. Okay, I'm going to give a little talk at uh, Halloween Extreme on some prop things. Honders uh, would find useful. I thought maybe others might use, <coughs> find this useful as well. Uh, this is a wireless security alert system. It's just a driveway alert. It's a PIR here that transmits its signal to the receiver. The receiver would be in the house in theory. Anybody passing and triggering the PIR, uh, passive infrared detector, will cause a chime and a light to go off in the house. Uh, I want to use it to uh, trigger props. I'm shirt cutting this. Um, done things like take the screws out of the back but already so you don't have to watch me do that. Um, but remove the screws, open it up. Heat gun, I've already removed most of the, uh, heated it up. Uh, this little enunciator is just hot glued in little heat gun and you can take this loose.
set it aside. Now this goes off, these LEDs light up, and this makes a little chime. So what I want to do is remove one of these LEDs, put it on a piece of wire so it can be used further away from this, and the same thing for the speaker. I'm also going to put in a little volume control knob. It's just a resistor that I can vary it. You can do the same thing by just trying different fixed resistors till you get this to put the volume out that you want. The idea behind this is for sound activated props, you would have this on the wire, put it up and put a piece of tape over its little re uh, audio receiver where you would, it picks up the sound when you clap your hands to start it. Then have the low chime sound that will cause it to go off whenever someone walks in the vicinity wherever you have the trigger placed. Same thing with the light detecting um, props that are looking for someone to break the beam. You can take one of these LEDs, tape it over the little sensor, and whenever someone walks in front of the, uh, uh, wherever you've placed the, the wireless PIR sender, it will cause your prop to go off. Um, so let's see if we can get this uh, together. We don't care about the polarity of the wires so much. Uh, um, we're not going to do anything with them, so we're just going to make sure we do them the same way. I'm going to cut one wire short, one wire long, and that allow me to go back and check in case I don't know which one I needed to hook to, to which one, putting it back together. Same thing for the LEDs. It doesn't matter which LED you choose. Fold them over, do whatever you want. Pick one LED, cut its leg a little short, and let's see, we're going to do this one. Has They have a little bit of hot glue on them, so I'm going to, to work it this way. Uh, pick one short. Make the other one long. Just leave it long enough that you can solder or, or, or tape a wire to it. You're better off soldering it, but... And LEDs, it does matter which, which one you have. So you can see the, uh, hopefully you can see that one leg is longer than the other. That'll allow me to make sure I get the wires back to the correct place. In my case, because these are uh, some of the older model ones had a much longer LED uh, leads. Stripping all the wire off, you can do it with any number of things. A little sharp knife, cutters. Just want to expose some bare wire. And again, it really isn't about this process. It's just about knowing that you can do this and to uh, keep them together. I'll put a little bit of solder on the wires. And probably won't bore you with soldering up the rest of these, but and I'm also going to put a little bit of heat shrink tubing on here. This will allow the uh, little mechanical support for the wires and also keep them from uh, coming together to short out the signal. Heat shrink tubing, kind of cool if you're not familiar with it. So the tube comes in various sizes to put over wires. And when you apply heat to it, it shrinks down to fit over the wire uh, snugly. And uh, you put a, a little bit of RTV around the, the end of the wire, you can actually get a, uh, you know, it's further up on the wire, a little bit of RTV or other similar substance and then shrink this down on there, you'll get a watertight connection on it as well. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and solder this up and we'll take a look at it again um, after that.